We're starting day two off right with some fresh hot pancakes made by Jerry Bain. Look, there's going to be plenty of we're going to go to the Beckley coal mine this morning. We are going to get on some trains and we are going to go down underground into an actual coal mine. They only employ ex-coal miners that actually did the work. I wanted to end the portion of coal because again, this was two portions, right? This was the new river through the southern coal fields. And this is the end of our coal portion of this event. And I thought I would, I would cap it off with an actual coal mine. After the coal mine, we'll be shifting into New River Gorge. We'll be uh, spending the rest of the day exploring the newest national park, and we'll be moving up there. We're all very excited for today's first venue, the Beckley Coal Mine Tour. Stay seated, keep your hands and feet behind these rails. Don't drag the top, no smoking in the mines, gotta work safe. Seated on modified coal train cars, pulled behind the electric engine of an actual mining train, we descend into the coal mine. This mine's here opened in 1890. The Phillips family owned this property, they were farming. So digging post holes one day, they found this seam of coal. The family decided to mine coal and sell house coal to the folks in this area. See if they could do better in farming. They must have done pretty good. They mined in here 20 years, 1890 to 1910. Then this, well, the reason they shut down, coal companies mined out on this end and down this direction, started selling coal cheaper than put them out of business. So this mine set here 1910 to 1959. That's when the city of Beckley got it. Took over two years to come in here and make this into a tour mine. Started giving tours in June of 1962. This has calcium carbide chips in the bottom, water in the top. You open this valve, when that water hits that carbide, that makes it acetylene gas. Just like your oxygen acetylene torches, same thing. Oh. I'm gonna show you their working conditions. Now that's the big improvement in lining. My dad started mines in 1924, 15 years old. This is what he used. Could you imagine working 12 to 15 hours with that? No. Okay, the big improvement this, it would burn for three hours. Other than that, very poor visibility. Y'all want to see total darkness? Yes. Everybody okay? Yeah. All right. Our guide, Dorsal, an actual retired miner, was humorous and knowledgeable and full of great stories from the past. The tour only lasted about an hour, and some of us, Jerry, weren't quite ready to leave. Do it again! <laughs> we don't need a destination, let's go where the river's taking us. Mm -hmm. Over fields and through the country, letting go of everything but us. We are going to hit some, some pretty narrow stuff. So if you got a trailer, you need to definitely mind your trailer. Um, if you're a driver and we get on some of these shelf roads, you're going to hear me say, mind your line, driver. And I'm going to say, uh, passenger, enjoy your view. Uh, but the last thing we need is something catastrophic like that. So even though it's pretty as we've set up these, Please find the road. Grab some glasses in the atlas. We can prove we're smarter than a phone. Mm -hmm. Let's go where there's no reception. See if we can make it on our own. With the coal portion of the trip behind us, we are now headed into the New River Gorge. We work our way up some tight, winding, steep shelf roads. As you might have noticed behind me, we made a decision last night. 
that Scott's Rubicon might be better suited for towing Dean's trailer than Jimmy's Ranger was. So we're giving that a try today. As we slowly descend towards the banks of the river, there are some beautiful views and some sketchy spots. For many of us, those sketchy spots were hardly obstacles at all. But those wider rigs and those with a trailer had to be very mindful in several areas. There is a former coal camp built by the Ephraim Creek Coal and Coke Company. The Ephraim uh, Creek Coal and Coke Company developed the Buffalo and Slater mines along the Fire Creek seam in the Ephraim and Thayer Coal Camp settlement in 1902. Thayer, which was named after Charleston coal operator and industrialist Otis and William Thayer, initially featured 250 houses. And unlike the two and four room houses elsewhere, Thayer featured five and six room and indoor plumbing, bathrooms, and electric lights. Larger two-story residents were also built for company officials, doctors, and others. The town boasted a large combination company store and office, an amusement hall, and a billiard and pool room. By 1916, Thayer had grown to 400 residents. In 1926, the coal company bought the mine and continued underground operations until the reserves were exhausted. By 1960, strip mines operated by the Pew Mining and Branch Fuel Company had taken on hold above there and resulted in the destruction of the community of Ephraim. As we cross this beautiful bridge over the New River, just outside the town of Thurmond, West Virginia, we're stopping on its banks to perform a cleanup. This is something that Scott does regularly, but this particular cleanup is part of the 50 for 50 campaign, a partnership between Quadratech and Tread Lightly to clean up 50 trails, one in each of the 50 states of the US over the course of 24 months. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can find out more. Eventually we're gonna put all the trash up at the dumpster, but for now let's pile it up in between the van and the, uh, the, van and the trailer right there. We pulled about 750 pounds of garbage out of this area and celebrated by sharing ice pops, kept frozen in true modern overland fashion by a 12 volt powered cooler. Jerry was right, so we can quote him. The town of Thurmond and the Dunglen Hotel 
hosted the world's longest poker game, which went on for 14 whole years. The hotel is no longer standing, but we're headed across the river again into the town of Thurmond to learn more about its history from a national park guide. I want you to think about your uh, hometown or a town that you've lived in or a place that you visited that has a main street. Uh, and think about all the types of buildings that you would see there. Stores, businesses, doctor's offices. We're gonna compare that almost with what we're seeing today here at Thurmond. Uh, and I'm kind of gonna give you guys like a whole picture too about why, why Thurmond is significant, why we're all here today and why we want to talk about it. Um, many people that have heard of Thurmond have heard it been called a ghost town or abandoned town, uh, but I'm here to squash those rumors because uh, I think that we just multiplied the town population by 10 times maybe, because the population is only about five people. Those are the main residents here of Thurmond. Uh, but with all you guys here talking about Thurmond, celebrating its history, as well as the hundreds of national park visitors that come here every day. Uh, we have an opportunity to talk about uh, what makes West Virginia significant when it comes to coal or railroad or all the history that we have going on right in this town. I do not have a date on this, but based on how many people are in this photo, I'd say this is somewhere between 1910 and 1920. Uh -huh. it's to be over there. Over there. Scott's looking at and showing me a picture of the old bridge we just came across before part of the trestle was removed. Tread lightly Scott was just picking up trash as he always does. But this particular piece of trash becomes vitally important tomorrow and you'll have to stay tuned for episode 3 to see why. <laughs> Another tight switchbacking shelf road takes us up and out of Thurmond and into the mountains of West Virginia once again. You can see on the map here, it's Bury Mountain Road that we're traveling. A unique aspect of this trip is that we have side-by-sides traveling with us on days two and three. Eric and Daniel from Mountain Maid Off-Road are ambassadors in the off-road community and help to bring the side-by-side -side and four-by-four -four community together in a unified effort to preserve access to these great roads and trails. In case you were wondering, side-by-sides can be registered in West Virginia, so they are allowed to travel on many paved roads. We made a brief stop at the Glade Creek Grist Mill at Babcock State Park. This is a beautiful spot. I wish we had more time to explore and sit and enjoy. But we're almost to camp and there'll be time for that soon. Warm showers await us at the campground we're staying at tonight. There's plenty of daylight left to cook a hot meal and get to know each other. This was the only dry night we had, and while it didn't rain last night, the dew in that field was so heavy, everyone staying in a tent got soaked as if it had rained.
Well, that's where we end day two. You're gonna wanna stay tuned for day three because in my opinion, it was the most exciting and most fun day of the whole trip. Capped off by an amazing thunderstorm. 